Hmm. Ever get the feeling someone's putting effects behind your back? Ah, me neither. Hey guys, and welcome to the last episode in our series working with the iFootage A1S3 wireless motion control rig. Now today, I want to go over an effect that I mentioned just in passing in the review, and that's integrating an actor shot on a green screen with a background you've shot previously, both using the same programmed motion control path. Now, since this effect isn't exactly taxing, in fact it's really easy, why don't we throw in a little 3D model integration by using the 3D camera tracker and send that over to Cinema 4D, because hey! I'm not nearly tired enough yet. Seriously though, I am so tired. So, in order to complete this effect, you need your background plate, you need your green screen actor footage, and a 3D model of your choice. And gang, you will also need either Cinema 4D Lite or Cinema 4D Standalone. Now let's get to work, shall we? Welcome back to After Effects, gang. It only seems like last week we were here. Not sure why. But as you can see, I have my comp all set up and ready to go. We have the green screen actor footage on top and my background plate on the bottom. If we check out our preview, you can see they're both synced up properly, so that's basically the effect all done. Now I'm just going to jump over to Premiere Pro and give you a little insight onto the syncing of these shots. So here we are in Premiere Pro CC, and as you can see, I have my active footage here on V1 and my background plate on V2. In a nutshell, the way you sync them up is pretty simple. You just select the top layer, head up to the effects controls and drop down the opacity menu. Drop that opacity down to a level that allows you to see both shots in motion. We'll then scrub to the end of the shot because with every slider shot it eventually ends and then all we have to do is make sure they both stop moving on the exact same frame pretty easy huh now let's head back to after effects for some fun so back in after effects we don't have anything left to do really to make this shot look any better or do we well we don't but let's just add some 3d models anyway to do this i mentioned we needed two plates we need the actor shot on the green screen and our background plate but one thing I didn't mention is I also shot the background plate completely in focus. And this is what we're going to use to get our 3D camera track. Now if I hit the S button, you can see that I've shot this in 4K and scaled it down about 55%. Now the 3D camera tracker in After Effects doesn't like scaled down footage. So what we're going to do is we're going to trick it. We're going to right click, hit pre-compose and move all attributes into a new composition. That way it just thinks that it's a full HD comp. Then we head over to tracker and hit track camera. And of course, it'll start analyzing it in the background. And once we're done, we'll have all those beautiful rainbow tracking points. Now, if we head up to effects controls and collapse down the advanced tab, you can see our camera resolve has an average error of 1.54. Now, is that great? No, but personally, I'm happy with it. If you're not, you can always hit detailed analysis and it'll run through it again in a much more sort of, I don't know, fine tooth comb fashion. And it'll probably bring that value down a little bit more. But since I'm happy with it, I'm not gonna do that. So our next step is to head back to our comp and holding down the left mouse button, we want to lasso as many of those track markers as we can. I think I've got them all. And when you're done, we'll right click and select create however many nulls you have and camera and I'll explain why we do this in a sec. So as you can see, we now have a crap load of nulls on screen and our 3D camera right down the bottom in our scene. From there, we want to export this tracking data to Cinema 4D so that we can start having some 3D model fun. To do that, we head up to file export and select Maxon Cinema 4D Exporter. And then all we have to do is save that Cinema 4D file wherever we like, and then jump back to After Effects and import it straight back in. We'll then select that Cinema 4D file, go up to Edit, scroll on down and find Edit Original. This will open up Cinema 4D, either Cinema 4D Lite or whatever version of Cinema 4D you currently have installed on your computer. And as you can see, if I hit the play button down here, you can see our camera move is here and all of our tracking markers are in here as well. Now the reason for bringing in the tracking markers is simple. They give us an idea of the layout of our scene, so when we bring in our 3D model, we can see where they're going to be located in the shot. For example, this cluster of markers here represents the back wall of my framed comics. So what's our next step? Well, adding some models of course. Now I've included a couple of models in the description for you to import. To add them to the shot, we want to head to File and down to Merge. We'll then select the model and hit Open. This will add them directly to this scene. Now most likely, you'll have to move the model into place using the pan and rotation tools. It always helps to change to the multiple view mode up here. That way you can adjust your model in different dimensions and it's easier to get it into place. So as you can see, I now have my model exactly where I want it in my shot. And if I hit the play button here, you can see what it looks like in the finished shot. Now at this point, you can add lighting, more models, whatever you like basically. 
And once you're done with all of that, we're gonna render it out and bring it back into After Effects. So let's head to Render Settings by clicking here. Firstly, heading to Output and making sure our frame range is set to All Frames, and our frame rate matches what we have in After Effects. Mine's set to 24, that's okay. Next, we'll head down to Save, make sure our format is set to PNG, and check Alpha Channel is on. We'll then designate it an area to save and name the file. Once you've done that, close out the render settings, hit the render button right here, and just wait for it to finish. Now, once it's done, we'll import our model's image sequence back into After Effects. Now you may notice that the frame rate might be different. My comp here is 24 frames per second, and After Effects imported the image sequence at 30 frames per second. So to fix that, we simply select the file, right click and hit interpret footage. Change our frame rate back to 24 and we're good to go. Now all we have to do is drop our model in under our actor footage and BAM! We now have our 3D model in our shot behind our actor. But it doesn't quite look right. Yet. The model's in focus and there's no motion blur, so it's not as blended as we'd like. So we'll head over to presets and type pixel motion blur and just add that directly to your model. That should take care of that pesky motion blur issue. From there, we'll deal with our focus issue. So let's head up to effect, blur and sharpen and add a camera lens blur. We'll then adjust the amount to something that looks right. That's pretty good. And remember to check repeat edge pixels. If we check it at preview, that looks much better. And our last step here is to color correct the model to better blend it a little bit more. But this is totally individual to your shot. So I'm not gonna go through that step by step. I'll just turn my color correction on and off so you can see what I'm talking about. It's only a subtle effect, but it could be that one thing that sort of takes your audience out of the shot. I'll now follow the exact same workflow and add my two other models, and what we're left with if we check out our preview is a pretty cool shot. Add up all those steps and you'll get something like this. Hmm. Ever get the feeling someone's putting effects behind your back? Ah, me neither. So that's more of an advanced take on combining multiple motion controlled tracks, and we just threw in an animated 3D object just for fun. Does it have a few more steps than our last multiple moving shot effect? Well, yeah, but that's why it looks so damn cool. And the beautiful thing is, once you have that tracking data, you can put whatever you want into that 3D scene, like this, or this, or even this. Alrighty gang, that's the last video on the iFootage A1S3 motion control rig. As you can see, it's a pretty versatile piece of kit and allows you to add that extra little bit of jazz to what otherwise would be either a static shot or a post animated shot in After Effects. Now if you want to learn more about it, you can check out my review here, or you can also click the links down in the description. And until next week, keep learning!